Do I look sad? Well, it's because I was when no one wanted to hire me as a field application scientist at first. It's important for me to tell you why. So maybe they'll hire you quicker. All right, all right. I'm not going to depress you this whole video. But I was really sad when I was not getting hired as a field application scientist after several interviews and several applications. It took me one whole year. From the time that I graduated with my PhD to the time that I started my new role as a field application scientist. And I made some mistakes that I had to reflect on. I didn't realize I was making these mistakes at the time. Who usually does? And so that's why I felt like this video was important to bring to you to make sure that you don't make some of these mistakes that I did. So thank you for tuning into my channel, The Profession PhD. I am Dr. Viola, and it took me one whole year to become a field application scientist. And it was very sad. And that's why I want to bring this video to you guys, because I don't want you to be sad for so long, questioning your value as a professional after spending all those years getting this PhD degree, all these years in school, and now you're trying to be taken seriously as a professional and people are not taking you seriously, not at least enough to give you a job. So let me tell you a couple of things I did wrong and Hopefully, you can either prevent yourself from doing these things, especially if you're still in grad school, start early, and or if you've already graduated, you can maybe just kind of refocus and redirect and go for it in a better way than I did. So, let's jump right in. So, if you notice, I have like on like a tire that I would wear day after day because... I was sad and I didn't have a job. Okay. <laughs> I mean, you don't just wear hoodies and gray stuff just because of those reasons. But listen, that was my life. It may be yours now. You want it to not be yours anymore or ever to be yours if you're still a grad student. So my first tip is to understand the difference between you being physically and mentally and emotionally prepared to take on applying for industry roles and interviewing at industry roles. It is a whole nother ball game. And so I was ready emotionally. I was excited. I was like, oh yeah, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna get into industry and I'm gonna work in industry and I'm gonna make a lot of money and I'm gonna travel. Emotionally excited, but underprepared mentally because I didn't really grasp what it took. That's why I make these videos for you guys, to help you to mentally prepare for the task at hand of getting into industry. And then I also wasn't physically prepared. I didn't have the resume that I needed to have laid out. I did not know the things, the way I should be practicing. I was practicing, but I didn't know. It didn't make sense, okay? And so the things that I did did not make sense, and I didn't realize it didn't make sense until I looked back. And I was like, that didn't make sense. Over time, I figured it out that certain things didn't make sense right before I got the job because eventually I got it, but I don't want it to take that long for you. And so there it is. I was not prepared physically and mentally. Emotionally, I was super excited. Don't let this happen to you. The second reason why it took me so long to get a job in the industry is because I was given a reason for me wanting the job when he asked, so why do you want to be a field application scientist? Why do you want to work here? I was given some really shallow, unintelligent answers. I felt like they were intelligent at the time. And so sometimes you may feel like what you 
have rehearsed is intelligent. But let me just give you a word of advice. Get advice. Get advice. That's my advice. Get advice on that. Because sometimes we may think that the response that we're giving is commercially good enough. And a lot of times, because we're coming from that brainiac, scientific, medical world, not saying that the people in commercial, you know, with commercial backgrounds are not, they are, but even those who are now scientists, they're MDs, PhDs who are leading in some of these positions, who are directors and managers that hired me, they are now, they have this other commercial side in their brain that operates. And so they're looking for the people who have that too, or who can easily start building upon um, that mental aspect. And so I think it's important to remember that you need to make sure that what you're saying, what you, how you're responding is the language of those who you are being interviewed by. So the third reason why it took me so long to get into industry is because honestly, I was focused on one particular type of role. So honestly, I was only focused on getting a medical science liaison position because that's the one that I heard about when I was about to graduate. And I was just like, oh my God, this sounds fascinating. They travel, they teach, they train, they go to hospitals and interact with people that are smart. And so I want to do that. And I didn't get it. I didn't get the job after having several MSL interviews. And at first, you know, I, I did a lot of things. I can't even say at first. I did a lot of things, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, to all the way to probably 29th. I should have really come into this with a more broad yet specific goal. Okay, so maybe having three or four or five positions in industry, a subject matter expert, a field application scientist, a medical science liaison, that I should have really sat down and did a lot of the homework, the research to really understand these roles, what they do, how they do it, how they contribute to the company. Because I would have understood early on that the role that I ended up actually doing my homework and research on much later in the trying to get into industry game, that that fit me. Like that role fit me perfectly. And I like it. I liked it a lot. One of the reasons why I liked it, and I have to tell you, as a field application science versus, science, let me say it right. I liked it as a field application scientist. No, I liked, this is why I probably didn't get the jobs at first. Okay, so one of the reasons why I, decided to start going for the field application scientist role and why I ended up liking it so much is because I felt like it fit me and what I wanted to do at the time. Even though this answer is shallow, I wanted to travel beyond borders. So I didn't want to stay in a region. And a lot of the MSL positions were regional based, Southeast, and I wanted to go all over. And guess what? A lot of my field application scientist jobs were global or covering the whole United States. It worked out perfectly. And I'm not saying that all field application scientist jobs are like that, but it just so happened that the ones that I ended up getting were. Well, thank you for tuning into my video. Even though it started out very sad, it ended up being happy because I'm an industry. You will be too. Listen, what you must do is you must embrace these things. Not that I am just saying, but other people are saying. You have to take all of this advice, put it together as the best advice for you in order for you to become the, the most outstanding candidate for the jobs you're interviewing for. The most outstanding person once you actually land the job within that role it's possible it's possible like i don't have to wear these gray shirts anymore like i mean i mean right now it's covid time i work from home so 
Once in a while I do, but I don't have to because I'm in my role. You will be too. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure you give it a thumbs up and more importantly, subscribe to my channel. Guys, I thank you for tuning into this video and I look forward to connecting with you again soon. Bye. Thank you.